Hello party people, it is Will Pemble and welcome back to part two of the Sprinter subfloor install. When last we met, we pulled all the original factory flooring stuff out of the van and now we're ready to put our floor joists, insulation, mass loaded vinyl, all the different bits and pieces are going to go in so that we have a finished subfloor and we can get on to building even more awesome bits and pieces of our van. So. Let's get started with that right now. For the subfloor, I've settled on a system that has absolutely stolen a dead knockoff of George Morrow's subfloor system. I've made a couple of modifications based on some things, mainly uh, height. Um, remember, this video is about heat and height, and if I could think of a word for sound that started with an H, I would love to add that to it, but I can't think of a word for sound that starts with H. If you know a word for sound that starts with H, Maybe put it in the comments below. I don't know. Holla. I don't know. Anyway, heat and height, those are the things. George has done a couple of subfloors using aluminum square tubing, and I'm going to use that for my floor joists as well. I think George uses one inch tubing. I'm going to use three quarter inch tubing and three quarter inch foam insulation. Another thing that I've discovered is if I place the floor joists 12 inches on center, I end up with kind of an odd spacing as I get from the back of the van to the front of the van. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the joists 12 inches edge to edge. And what that does is it spreads them out just a little bit, which I think is going to be fine. And it ends the floor exactly where the floor needs to end. And so we end up with a really super crisp floor joist system. And I think there are 14 joists that go from one end to the other, and it spaces out, I think, just exactly perfect. So I'm going to uh, lay those out right now, and then we will glue them down. And the great thing about apple boxes is they're 12 inches wide. Okay, that's what our floor joists are going to look like, the bulk of them. And as you can see, they're spaced about 12 inches from end to end. When it comes to adhesive and adhesion, there are a couple of schools of thought. My personal feeling is that it's usually going to be best to leave the paint where it is rather than sand down the paint so that you get metal to glue to metal. I've got two reasons for wanting to leave the paint where it is. First of all, from a pure physics standpoint, when we think about adhesion, um, adhesion comes from molecular bonds and molecular bonds, van der Waal bonds, if you want to get fancy about it, van der Waal bonds is the magnetic force which actually makes things sticky. Sticky things aren't really sticky, they're really magnetic. So the magnetic attraction between two surfaces comes from van der Waal bonds, and van der Waal bonds has to do with the surface area. If you sand something down, you are by definition smoothing it out. So if we sand the paint off of the metal, I wonder and I suspect, although I cannot prove this scientifically without serious gear, I suspect that we are removing some of the surface area. I think the paint has more surface area to it, which means if we leave the paint where it is, we will have more surface area and the floor joists will stick harder to the floor. Now, this doesn't matter one way or the other because the floor is going to be completely in place. There's nothing that's going to move this floor save turning the van upside down. What I really wonder about and what I really think, and again this is just opinion, I can't guarantee that a Reaver spaceship won't pierce the side of this van and the water tanks and flood the subfloor and the gutters under the subfloor and if we've removed the paint from all of these places, one, two, three, four, I don't know how many, maybe more than a hundred places, 
If we've removed the paint, removed the rust protection from underneath the subfloor, if there's a big spill, I worry about rust, and people in sprinter vans seem to worry about rust quite a bit anyway. So that's why I've made the choice that I have in terms of why and how to glue this thing down. I really don't know that there's a wrong answer to this, but this has been my answer. I am leaving as much of the van as I possibly can fully, fully pristine. Okay, floor joists done. Let's take a little bit closer look at what we got here, and then we're gonna get to the next two layers at least today. Now to recap, these are three quarter inch square aluminum tubing, an eighth of an inch thick. And we've got 14 of them running across the van from the back to the front. The first one is 65 inches, the second one is 70, 70, 47, 45 and three quarters, 45 and three quarters, 70, 70, 70, 68, 68, 60 and three eighths, 60 and three eighths, and the last one is 57 and seven eighths. Over here, I've made this little cantilever section of framing, and the idea of the cantilever section here is that this is gonna support the starboard front side of the galley there. That's gonna be the galley cabinet that's gonna come up from here. And so I've built this, you don't need a five foot wide door to enter any dwelling, including this one. So we're gonna use this space for the galley. And a lot of people do that, it's nothing new. What I've built is the subfloor joist system so that this is pretty strong. If you were to build a deck off of your house and you didn't want it supported from underneath, you would cantilever the thing and then you would want each of these beams to go at least twice the length of this part sticking out here. And so I made this piece of about 24 inches and then anchored across here, glued down to the deck, screwed in here with little L brackets and screws. These are, I think these are number eight self-drilling by five eighths long screws that go through the aluminum here, and they're also secured with Loctite. So that's really important, Loctite. Every screw, every bolt, every nut, every time, Loctite. Look, you can even see, here's some Loctite residue. And then this is my adhesive, which is set up, but not completely dry. And um, I'm using some form of liquid nails to do that. So. Next step in the process is I've cut a bunch of polystyrene foam board. We're using the three quarter inch thickness. The board itself has an R value of 2.89 at three quarters of an inch thick. If you put another three quarters of an inch of air behind it, you'll get 5.69. Now in our system, we don't have three quarters of an inch in air. So we're gonna be closer to the 2.89, maybe three or so in terms of the R value. And if you know what R value is and why it matters, um, put it in the comments below. I know that more is better, but I don't know exactly what the R value calculates or expresses. And now I'm just gonna place them starting from the back, going to the front, and I'm gonna cover the whole van with this polystyrene foam insulation. If you look down here at the base of the wheel well, what you'll find is when I put in my foam insulation, it covers three quarters of an inch of the wheel. And then when I put in the next layer, it'll cover more and the next layer it'll cover more. And what I'll end up with is I'll end up with about an inch or more, almost an inch and a half of untreated wheel well in the van. By untreated, I mean not covered with kill mat, which is really important. So I'm going to real quick, just do a couple of strips of kill mat and get that base of the wheel well done. I'm not gonna do the whole wheel well, cause I don't wanna do that right now, but I am gonna do the base of it so that we're not leaving anything unfinished. We're not leaving any opportunities for sound dampening, sound deadening, unexploded. This is 
what the floor system looks like now with all of our polystyrene foam board insulation installed and as you'll see just enough of the kill mat to cover the sides of the wheel wells up past where the subfloor is going to end up. The next piece of the puzzle is this stuff which is mass loaded vinyl and by mass I mean it is massive, it is dense and it's made of vinyl. So what we end up with is we end up with this thick, heavy, sound, heat, everything else absorbing material here that is really flexible. We're gonna put that on top of our foam insulation and then we're gonna put the plywood on top of that, then we're gonna screw it down, then our subfloor is gonna be done and we can get on to other things. This stuff is insanely heavy. That roll, which is four feet wide and, a, and 25 feet long, it weighs 100 pounds. 18 inch long piece of this stuff weighs six pounds. It's insanely heavy, which is good because what we want is we want sound to just stay out of our van. And that is gonna help with that. It's also gonna help with vibration. It's also gonna help with heat and it's only an eighth of an inch thick. Remember, we're mostly all about heat and height. Heat, height, and holla, I think, is where we ended up with it because we wanna, we wanna try to manage sound as much as we can. So, I'm gonna cut a 70 inch long piece of this stuff. This stuff isn't cheap. So, what would Bob Vila do? Measure twice, cut once. And just to be safe, I'm gonna measure about 70 and a quarter so I've got just a smidge of wiggle room. As always, we're being insanely careful with our razor blades. Using a razor blade is a lot like rock climbing, right? In rock climbing, what you wanna do is you wanna only ever move one thing at a time. You move one hand, one foot, one leg, and you've got three points secure at all times on the rock, and that's how rock climbing is done safely. So I try to bring some of that to use of razor blade knives. I only move one hand at a time. So I get my brace hand where it's going to be and then I move the knife and then I move my hand and then I move the knife and you cannot cut corners. You have to be very careful when you're goofing around with razor blades because boy howdy will they change your day if you make a mistake. That's going to go right across here. When I climb up on this stuff, I'm not going to step on the vinyl because what I don't want to do is I don't want to dent or compress my foam insulation under here. Remember, it's just styrofoam and so you can squish it really easily. The idea of the styrofoam is not to be strong. The idea of the styrofoam is to contain air. So it's very fluffy, very light, mostly made of air. So if you step on it, you squish it. If you squish it, it's not mostly made of air. If it's not mostly made of air, it's not very good at insulating. So I put a piece of plywood up here so that when it's time to climb around inside the van and do my cutting, I'm not gonna damage the stuff that I've already built. Um, if you've installed a bunch of vinyl flooring, if you've, in, if you've done tile, if you've done this sort of thing, you will have developed a feel for how and where to cut this sort of stuff so that it matches up with the edge of the, with the, edge of the wall. Um, if you haven't done that, it's not that big a deal. So if you make a wrong move here, if you slice in the wrong direction or something like that, it's no big deal. You can just leave it there and put it down. Remember, plywood's going to go on top of this, and then floor is going to go on top of the plywood. There's all sorts of opportunities to correct your mistakes. Um, I like to try and do it really, really perfectly because I am going to keep these images in my head for the rest of my days. And so I'm going to know all the little mistakes that happen along the way. So I want everything to kind of be pixel perfect as I go. But don't make yourself crazy over that. Just get the vinyl over the whole floor. Just a quick recap here. We have installed our quarter inch square aluminum tubing, eighth inch thickness. We have put our three quarter inch polystyrene foam insulation board down. 
we have also cut our mass loaded vinyl which is an eighth of an inch thick and we've cut that out and it fits in the whole van and it looks kind of cool I must say I'm sort of excited about that. The next step in the process is to use these pieces of vinyl that we've cut out I'm going to use these as a template to cut plywood so that the plywood fits beautifully in the van. So that's the next thing we're going to do and I think now might be a good time for some banjo music. Okay, so that's the first panel. I've got the wheel wells cut out. I've got these little divots in the back cut out. And let's put it in and see if it works. It fits perfectly. And I'll go ahead and tell you, it's always a thrill when it happens, right? You measure, you know, in your head it all is gonna work out just fine. But when you just drop that panel in there and it fits, it's a surprise. It's a happy surprise. Okay, next one. Ah, not bad. Progress. Okie dokie, so here is our finished subfloor. Now, the subfloor is not screwed down to the joists. One of the things that I mentioned maybe earlier on is that when I installed the joists, I drew on the side of the van the outlines of each of the joists so that I know where they live underneath the subfloor. Good news, our aluminum framing has just arrived. Hey! I got something for you. Framing Wanna tech? Help me? Big long thing? Yeah. yeah, let me get a mask. All right. It's really long and really heavy. Ah, 175. Woo! All right. Yeah, we can just set it right here. Right, let's flip it over so it's off the ground. Yep. Ready? <clears throat> Thank you, RL carriers. So, what's here? This is kind of fun. This is awesome. Uh, Extruded aluminum profiles from the wonderful people at Framing Tech in, I uh, believe, Rochester, New York. And we're going to build a whole bunch of really amazing stuff inside the van with what's here. It's like Christmas. That's the second test. We'll see what the numbers show. Um, it sounds and feels a lot quieter. That may have to do with how much deader the high frequency noises coming off the road and coming through the floor are, right? So sound pressure levels, decibels, aren't necessarily a measurement of what we perceive to be sound because a high frequency sound can seem and feel a lot louder than a low frequency sound. So that is a thing that we've got to keep in mind when we're thinking about sound pressure levels and what the acoustic feeling of the vehicle is. I'm going to see if there's a way that we can measure not just the sound overall, but the frequencies, what kind of frequencies we're seeing, because higher frequencies are easier to hear, but the good news is about higher frequencies, they're also easier to damp down. So you don't need thick, super, super thick material to kill the high frequency noises. Anyway, it feels a whole lot better and we will see what the results are right now.
So when I say yay the subfloor is finished, I don't really mean that it's finished. It's probably about 80% finished. But here's the thing about 80%. Um, doing a project like this is a lot like running a marathon. It's halfway over at 80%, right? And so a marathon is halfway over at about 20 miles. If you've ever run a marathon, it's not a trivial thing. And the last five miles are every bit as hard, if not harder than the first 21 point, what, six, whatever. Um, so it's a big thing to do a floor like this. One of the things that's gonna happen is as I start to install components like water tanks and water heaters and air heaters and all that sort of stuff, I may chop pieces of the subfloor out so that I can mount things hard to the surface of the van where I'm not gonna need um, where I'm not gonna need that wood or I might not want it, right? If I'm if I'm installing a heater, an air heater, I may not want to install the air heater to a piece of wood. I might want to install it right to the floor of the van so that it exhausts out and it's really, really tough and strong. So this is just like the basic subfloor install. And the really cool thing about this for me is this is an entirely repeatable process, right? I've got AutoCAD drawings of this. I can put these pieces of wood on a CNC router and chop them out again. It's no problem to repeat this process once you've figured it out if you've figured it out and documented it properly along the way. So getting from no floor to this subfloor next time is gonna take, I don't know, 20% of the time because I have done all of the work and I don't have to do any of the prep work again. That's repeatable, reusable. So I'm gonna carve little pieces of the subfloor out as I go. The other thing I'm gonna do is if you look at where the joists are, you'll see that maybe there are seams and there aren't joists under the seams. And so I'm gonna pull stuff up and I'm gonna put extra pieces of aluminum tubing in places where I need it to be super strong. If I mount something, a cabinet onto the wood floor, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that there is aluminum tubing directly underneath that bit of cabinetry or that refrigerator or that whatever it is so that the energy, the weight bearing is going straight through to the frame of the vehicle, not to some bendy wavy piece of plywood. So anyway, 80% of the subfloor is done. This is how I did it. This is how I'm gonna do it the next time I do it. I'll have little refinements and improvements as I go along the way. But um, it's a wonderful adventure. It feels so great to do a project like this. I was talking to a friend of mine, why do you love building a van? I love building a van because it has all the things. There's plumbing, there's heating, there's electronics, there's automotive, there's engineering, there's programming, there's fabrication, there's all of the things. And they're not really, really huge projects. You want to get into plumbing in your house? Oh my gosh, that's like the rest of your year. But plumbing in a van, it's it's got all the components of it and all the fun, but it's not going to last forever. So anyway, if you want to build a van, I think you should. Please comment. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what I could be doing better. Tell me what I'm doing right. If you like it, subscribe. Thank you for helping me bring physics, family, and fun to kids everywhere. I am Will Pemble, and I'll see you soon.